you know, when it comes to AEW, I think it, it is suffice to say that at the moment, they appear to have at least a little bit of momentum in their corner. And some of you are going to opine and talk about, well, yeah, they have opine, uh, they have momentum going up against WWE. They're going to catch Raw. And I'm not even, who cares? Just as a brand. Their AEW Dynamite television product on Wednesday nights. The show, the company, the product. The thing that matters above all else, not the competition, is what they're doing and how they handle their own shit. They're doing well. They're building a little bit of momentum. They've got a little bit of momentum. Sometimes defying my understanding of things, sure. Will it last? Who knows? Is it a short blip on the radar and then there will be a leveling out in a few months? Perhaps. Are there some deeper seated issues that make me concerned about the long term picture? Yes. But at this moment, I cannot deny that AEW definitely has a little bit of momentum in their corner. And that's a good thing. That's a good thing. And as you talk about that, you know, we've certainly seen in recent months that Tony Khan um, and All Elite Wrestling have been very much in a talent acquisition mode. And they've been bringing in guys of all different types and levels. The Andrades and the Tommy Ends, Malachi Black, you know, the Big Shows, the Mark Henrys, the Christians, like Miro, you know. They've went to work over the past year bringing in a lot of talents, bringing in a lot of dudes, a lot of ladies. Like They just finally got Thunder Rosa signed to a contract. Well, it took them so long. Um, but, you know, it kind of makes sense. Like, while it creates some challenges in terms of you get a glut of roster and you get too many people and that can lead to some challenges with the product. Like, you're trying to feature all these people that you're paying for. You're trying to get some justification for the money that you spend, blah, 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 blah. The reality is like, yeah, they're trying to build something. So I would rather have too much than not enough. Like that's, that's okay. You can, you can adjust later. Tis better to go heavy and then back off. Tis better to go balls deep and pull out. Listen to that last part. I promise you it's always good advice. Um, so not surprising. There, Tony Khan is wanting to go out there and do more. He had a couple of notable names that are out there, in theory, on the open market. And we've already talked about, in a recent video on this channel, about the reports of Daniel Bryan having signed with AEW and what that means for the company, uh, what they can do with him, what that represents. Uh, but the other big name out there, obviously, is CM Punk. And time will tell whether or not this is ultimately going to manifest to be true. Time will tell whether or not CM Punk is using AEW as leverage to get a bigger money deal with WWE. Time will tell whether CM Punk is just bullshitting everybody. Time will tell if he's already signed a deal and he's in the tank and we're ready to go. Like, time will tell. But it certainly has created, for a company that was getting a little momentum over the past few weeks, created a little bit more buzz and a little bit more momentum for them when you're talking about bringing in guys like a Daniel Bryan and potentially a CM Punk too. You know, this is not something to sneeze at. It's not a small potatoes deal. Is it a significant, dynamic, changing, game changing, uh, wrestling landscape altering type of thing? No. We need to stop acting like it is. But will it help them? Sure. Is it better for them to sign a CM Punk than not sign a CM Punk? Why not? Now, Lord only knows like how much they would have to pay a CM Punk, how much he's going to actually want, what he's going to actually do. You know, then there could be like a cost-benefit analysis, you might need to say, like, how much are you paying and how much are you really getting in return? That said, no risk it, no biscuit, nothing venture, nothing gain. 
If Tony Khan and AEW have a chance to sign CM Punk, they have to do it. Because here's a guy, even more so than Daniel Bryan, who's coming off of a few months ago, main eventing night two of WrestleMania. Here's a guy in CM Punk that seven plus years later, literally seven and a half years later, since his last appearance in WWE, people are still talking about CM Punk and talking about him coming back to wrestling. Like there is certainly a desire there from a portion of the fan base, a big portion of the fan base of wrestling, that would love to see CM Punk come back. And to be able to have this guy who walked away on bad terms from Vince many years ago to say, you know what? I believe enough in what AEW is doing that I'm going to stake my name and the le lasting legacy of my career on this leadership and this company. Like, that's a statement. And that would be a pretty powerful statement for this company. You know, and I got to be honest, like, if you bring in a Daniel Bryan and CM Punk and you aren't averaging 1.5 million viewers short into that, then something has went tragically fundamentally wrong. It absolutely has. Because these are the types of guys that the AEW fans, the Meltzer stands, have talked about that this company should be built around. You know, these guys, the indie darlings, which Punk certainly was in his time, and Daniel Bryan absolutely was and still remains to this day. You know, like if you bring those guys in and they don't significantly bump your ratings even in the short term, like, Kind of got to take a look and see, well, what the hell do we need to do to shake things up? Now, there's no question. Daniel Bryan, and especially now that we're talking about CM Punk in this video, CM Punk is going to bring more hardcore eyeballs to the product. He'll even bring, I think, initially some casual, more casual eyeballs to the product because, you know, even people that won't watch AEW, hate AEW, think it sucks, that watch WWE, and sometimes you wonder for what God knows reason, are going to sit there and say, CM Punk is appearing? Let me see what the hell he's going to do. Is his box office value in wrestling diminished at all because he's gotten his shit rocked a couple of times in UFC? Um, I don't know. I don't think so because he's been gone so long that it's going to feel really, really fresh when he would come back. Now you sit there and say, he's been gone so long, is he going to have the same fire in the belly, the same passion for this? Is he going to be the same level of character, same level of talker, same level of performer? And you know what? Those are certainly valid questions. Those are questions that Tony Khan and the leadership in AEW are going to have to ask and should absolutely be asking. And frankly, before CM Punk considers whether or not he wants to do this or decides that he has indeed wanted to do this and wants to do this, now he's got to ask himself, can he be at that same level that he once was? I think it's a very valid, fair question. Could he have an HBK-like, you know, second chapter of his career? Perhaps. And if he does, then AEW is all the better for it. But if he kind of comes in there and he's half-ass and his attitude still kind of sucks and he's really just there to kind of collect the paycheck and he's not that invested... And what he's doing, he's not invested in what the company is doing. Like It could be a rep recipe for massive, massive disappointment. It just can be. Now, when you look at CM Punk, like, how would you bring him in? You know, And you're going to get the standard answers of, I'm going to send him at Page, or I'm going to send him at Omega. You got Cody Rhodes, obviously, lurking around the corner. Says, you got to go through me. We're doing founder stuff here. But to me, there's one or two options. You either bring him in and you send him in at MJF. You can tease that up for a while. You can build that up for a while. There's a story there. There was even recently the picture circulating of a young MJF taking a picture with CM Punk at some type of autograph signing. Like, imagine incorporating that <clears throat> MJF as a talker, CM Punk as a talker. Feels like a hell of a start for a guy like Punk. And if you're going to have an MJF lose, having him lose to a guy like Punk isn't going to kill him, that's for sure. Or even if you weren't going to have Punk win that first time. Like MJF losing to him in light of AEW isn't a bad thing. But you almost wonder if you bring in a Punk. And I don't want to say playing the Cornette type of role. Or the Dan Lambert type of role. But there could be something there where he talks about you know, the fact that he sees what AEW is. And he thinks it's bullshit. He sees AEW 
and he thinks they're a clusterfuck, like, there could be something interesting there. Like, have CM Punk go against the grain. Because I think ultimately, CM Punk has always been the best when he's been in a position where he can kind of go against the grain and he can represent a bit of counterculture. Now you bring him into this land of misfit toys that you might call AEW, and you say, well, just how much of a misfit is he really going to be? I think he could certainly do that in a way where he can speak some truth, but have it be in a way where he speaks some truth that connects with some people that would be like, yeah, that's why it sucks. All the while, he's quietly kind of putting over the product in his own way. Um, I would be really interested to see how you bring CM Punk in. Because, you know, similarly to Daniel Bryan, but I think even more so, you can't just bring in CM Punk and just throw him at anybody. You have to have the right opponents, the right dance partners. You got to have those right people built up. Like, you got to feature Punk in a very prominent spot. You can't be sitting there and say, yeah, hey, we'll feature him one week and then he won't be on TV for a week or two. No. You need to feature him consistently. He needs to be a big effing deal. Because there's no question that signing CM Punk would represent the single biggest move that Tony Khan has made to date. Bigger than bringing in a Chris Jericho, bigger than bringing in a Jim Ross, you know, or any other legend or established name in wrestling. Like, this is it. This is the biggest deal to date for the company. Yes, even bigger than Daniel Bryan. This is a big deal. So you have to treat that right. You have to be very careful in how you present him. There'd be nothing worse than knowing that you put a lot of your chips in the CM Punk basket and then you horribly mangle it. And do I have some concerns about how Tony Khan, the EVPs, um, as they're putting together this shit, like, do I have some concerns about how they would feature CM Punk? Absolutely. Some of their recent track record isn't that great when it comes to some of these guys that they bring in. Like, they really don't know what the hell they're doing. It feels like. But if you're an AEW fan, should you be excited about this? Oh, absolutely. Should you go ahead and print out shirts like AEW Pawns WWE in the ratings? No. <laughs> let's, let's not break out the anointing oil just yet. Um, because like I said, this is not the dynamic game-changing move that some may think it is. It's a big deal. Don't get me wrong. It's a big move. Like it'll certainly be the most notable move to date for AEW. And it'll be very important for them to capitalize upon that and do big things with CM Punk. But we will see what they do. We will see if this even happens. We will see how engaged and interested he is. We will see if he's still got that touch. You know, because we could take it for granted, but that's a long time to be away and not really be performing. Like even when you think about Shawn Michaels, I brought up the Shawn Michaels second half of his career, arguably being better in the first half of his career, and I, I feel that way. But Sean was even then, he was only gone about four years and he was also kind of plugged in at different points in times. He was around, if you remember, because he was drugged up half the time. But you get the point, like CM Punk, largely for the most part over the past seven and a half years, been removed from the product and not actively been wrestling and not doing some of these things. Like, it is a risk. You might say it's not a risk to sign a CM Punk but for the type of money it's probably going to take to bring in a CM Punk, it absolutely is a risk. It's a big risk. No risk at no biscuit. You got to take some chances. I totally am aligned. And if I had my daddy's money like Tony Khan has uh, his daddy's money, and I'm trying to swing for the fences and hit a couple of home runs, like you have to go after him. You have to bring him in 100 out of 100 times. If it fails, it freaking fails. Tis better to know by trying than never knowing because you didn't get it done. But man, be very, very interesting to see how these next few months unfold and see if we ultimately see CM Punk in AEW. And if we do, what he's like and how this company features him. Because it could be, you know, a very, very positive thing for them. Or it could be something that we look back and say, Man, that was an ultimate letdown and disappointment.